Hi friends, welcome to the channel, The Nurse. Here we are discussing about neonatal intensive care related nursing questions and answers with their explanations. We will move to the topic. Before that, if you are not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. We will move to the topic. Neonatal intensive care related questions and answers. First question. Which of the following is the primary cause of anemia of prematurity? Blood loss due to frequent lab draws, insufficient iron intake, decreased erythropoietin production, hemolysis due to RH incompatibility. Here correct answer is decreased erythropoietin production. In the prematurity there will be decreased erythropoietin that will leads to decreased uh, hemoglobin production. Anemia of prematurity occurs due to low erythropoietin levels leading to reduced red blood cell production. Frequent blood sampling and iron deficiency can contribute but the primary cause is immature erythropoietin regulation in the case of prematurity. Which neonatal condition is characterized by high bilirubin levels due to excessive hemolysis? Physiological jaundice, breast milk jaundice, hemolytic disease of newborn, Gilbert's syndrome. Correct answer is here hemolytic disease of the newborn. Hemolytic disease of the newborn occurs due to RH or ABO incompatibility leading to excessive hemolysis, severe jaundice and risk for chronic terrors if untreated. Chronic terrors uh, it will happen after bilirubin reaches above the uh, 20 milligram per deciliter. It affects brain. What is the primary goal of antibiotic prophylaxis in neonates at risk for group B streptococcus infection? Reduced neonatal respiratory distress, prevent early onset sepsis and meningitis, promote maternal immunity, eliminate fever during labor. Correct answer here. Prevent early onset sepsis and meningitis. Intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis or IAP is administered to mothers colonized with GBS to prevent neonatal early onset sepsis and meningitis, which can be life threatening. So, in case of mothers is uh, suspected or uh, having colonized uh, GBS, so that uh, in that case there is a high chance for neonatal early onset sepsis and meningitis. So in order to prevent that uh, conditions, we can administer intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis. Which infection control measure is most effective in preventing the spread of methicillin resistant Streptococcus aureus or MRSA in neonatal intensive care unit? Use of broad spectrum antibiotics. Routine decontamination of neonatal skin, strict hand hygiene compliance, increased use of mechanical ventilation. Correct answer strict hand hygiene compliance. MRSA is in neonatal ICU is largely prevented by strict hand hygiene protocols, minimizing cross contamination and protecting vulnerable neonates. Next question. Which immunoglobulin is primarily transferred from the mother to fetus through the placenta? It is a common question. Options are IgA, IgM, IgE, IgG. So correct answer is IgG immunoglobulin that is usually uh, transferred from mother to fetus through placenta. IgG is the only immunoglobulin that crosses the placenta providing Pass a passive immunity to the fetus. This helps protect the newborn against infection during the breast, uh, first few months of life. So, one uh, can you name one uh, one more immunoglobin that is transferred from uh, mother to baby through breast milk? By breastfeeding, baby will get immunoglobulin. Which immunoglobulin is transferred from mother uh, to feed uh, uh, neonates uh, by giving a breastfeeding? 
which neonatal infection is most commonly prevented by administering intramuscular vitamin K at birth? Group B Streptococcus, neonatal meningitis, hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, cytomegalovirus infection. Correct answer here hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Vitamin K deficiency can lead to hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, causing spontaneous bleeding due to impaired clotting factor activation. Administering vitamin K at birth prevents this condition. Seventh question. Which condition is most commonly associated with hypernatremia in neonates? Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, breastfeeding failure dehydration, neonatal hypoglycemia, respiratory distress syndrome. The correct answer is breastfeeding failure dehydration. Hypernatremia in neonates often results from inadequate fluid intake. Particularly when breastfeeding is ineffective leading to dehydration and elevated sodium levels. So it is uh, the uh, blood to become uh, concentrated and the sodium level will be increased in that cases because of dehydration. Eighth question, which electrolyte imbalance is most likely to occur in neonates with prolonged phototherapy for jaundice? Hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, hypermagnesemia, hyponatremia. Correct answer, hypocalcemia. Prolonged phototherapy can reduce calcium levels due to increased metabolism of vitamin D and altered calcium hemostasis. It will lead to hypocalcemia and neuromuscular irritability. Next question. Which pain assessment tool is most commonly used for neonates in the NICU? Wombacker faces pain scale, Kreis scale, Plaque scale, Numeric rating scale. So important term is neonates. So correct answer here, cry scale. So what is cry scale? The cry scale is a validated neonatal pain assessment tool that evaluates crying, oxygen requirements, increased vital signs, expression and sleeplessness in preterm and term infants. So that is why I uh, told to concentrate on neonates. In other condition, we, we can use Wombacker uh, pain scale, but for neonates, we can use cry scale as a most appropriate tool. Tenth question, which non-pharmacological intervention is most effective in reducing pain during minor procedures like heel pricks in neonates? Skin to skin contact, cold compress application, early discharge from NICU, complete fasting before procedures. Correct answer here, skin to skin contact. Kangaroo mother care or skin to skin contact has been shown to significantly reduce pain responses in neonates by promoting comfort and stabilization. 11th question. Which medication is commonly used to close a patent ductus arteriosus or PDA in preterm neonates? Ibuprofen, dopamine, ceftriaxone, morphine. Correct answer is ibuprofen. Uh, can you comment one more medicines uh, in comment section that is used to uh, used for closure of patent ductus arteriosus? Please comment below. Ibuprofen and indomethacin are prost uh, prostaglandin inhibitors commonly used to medically close a PDA in preterm infants. They work by reducing prostaglandin production which keeps the ductus arteriosus open. So ibuprofen and indomethacin used for uh, closure of PDA. Which of the following antibiotics should be avoided in neonates due to the risk of kernicterus? Ampicillin, gentamicin, ceftriaxone, vancomycin. Correct answer is ceftriaxone. 
Shift axon displaces bilirubin from albumin binding sites, increasing the risk of kernicterus, a form of bilirubin induced neurotoxicity in neonates. 13th question Which of which feeding strategy is recommended for neonates at a risk of NEC? That is necrotizing enterocolitis. Rapid bolus formula feeds, exclusive parental nutrition, gradual advancement of human milk feeds, delayed feeding initiation beyond 10 days. Correct answer is option C, gradual advancement of human milk feeds. Human milk is protective against NEC due to its immunological components. Gradual advancement helps prevent intestinal over distension and reduces the risk of bacterial overgrowth. Next question. <coughs> Sorry. Which supplement is essential for bone mineralization in preterm neonates receiving prolonged pre parental nutrition? Iron, vitamin K, calcium and phosphorus, omega-3 fatty acids. Correct answer is calcium and phosphorus. Preterm infants have increased needs for calcium and phosphorus due to rapid bone mineralization. Parental nutrition must contain adequate amounts to prevent osteopenia of prematurity. 15th question. Which neonatal condition is caused by a deficiency of Glucose 6-phosphatase, galactosemia, glycogen storage disease type 1 or von Gierke's disease, phenyl ketonuria, maple syrup urine disease. Correct answer is glycogen storage disease type 1 or von Gierke's disease. Von Gierke's disease results from a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase leading to severe hypoglycemia, hepatomegaly and lactic acidosis. It requires careful dietary management to prevent metabolic crisis. 16th question. Which metabolic disorder is associated with musty smelling urine in neonates? Phenylketonuria, tyrosinemia, Cystic Fibrosis, Organic Acidemia. Correct answer is Phenyl Ketonuria. Phenyl Ketonuria or PKU is a genetic metabolic disorder that causes an inability to break down phenyl alanine, leading to accumulation and musty smelling urine due to excess phenyl ketones. So that is about today's video. We have discussed 16 questions related to neonatal intensive care nursing. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubt means you can comment it below. I will try to solve your doubts. So please share with your friends and don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. The nurse. Thank you.